Order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Gunter. Here. Council Members Cosden. Here. Cummings. Here. Hayden. Here. Long. Here. Shepard. Here. Steinke. Here. Welsh. Here. All present. Thank you. Item 5, citizens input time, a maximum of six minutes is set for input of citizens on matters concerning city government. Three minutes per individual. Please remember to state your name. Anyone wishing to participate will utilize my podium to the left. You're right. Seeing none, citizens' input is now closed. We'll move on to item six, which is business. 6A is FY24 budget. Discussion continue. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. I want to have a presentation from our finance director, uh, Mark Mason. Uh, upon conclusion of last week's uh, budget workshop, we took the input that we received on the items uh, that were concerning you all. At the beginning of that meeting, we had made um, a mention of some additional state uh, sales tax that was shared with us after we had released the city manager's proposed budget. So we utilized those uh, additional news to, to try and accomplish the desires of council uh, as discussed last week. And uh, we'll, we'll present uh, to you today how that worked out. Yes, sir. Mayor, Council Members, Mark Mason, Financial Services Director. Yeah, pleasure to be here again today. So uh, this is a much shorter version of the presentation that we gave last week. Uh, as the Council will recall, as we went through a discussion following the proposed budget, uh, discussion from various department heads as well as the information I provided you, there were several suggestions that came through from the, from the City Council. Uh, and so we've taken that information and we've applied that to the excess revenue that we received uh, following the uh, issuance of the proposed budget. And so real quick, we're going to talk a little bit about the additional revenue allocation. And we're going to talk about the options that we included and what was proposed by the city council. And then we'll have a quick budget overview after that. The additional revenue amounted to a little over $3 million. $3 million. This came from uh, a combination of resources, uh, the half-cent sales tax information that came in from the state, uh, it, as well as the municipal revenue sharing um, allocation, and the communication services tax allocation. On a net basis, at 95% at budget, came in at $3,026,737. And so we took the opportunity and looked at the information that you had requested last week uh, as a council, and we applied that through some of the requests that were made by the, uh, the department heads. Specifically, we looked at uh, public safety first, and then we went to the, uh, the request that the city attorney had made and, and plugged that into the, into the equation. Development services, uh, we have a budget amendment that's coming through uh, and you had approved. And as part of that budget amendment, there's going to be additional personnel. So we're putting the additional personnel in, as well into the, uh, into the equation for next year. Public works, there was a request for a million dollars in here for sidewalks. Uh, that is also included. And the remainder amount, which is the net amount from the 3026000 uh, we have applied to something called city beautification. City beautification is wide ranging. It could be uh, additional medians. It also could be hiring staff to go out there and clean up along the medians of the city as well as the right of ways of the city, which we have been doing over the course of the uh, last couple of months. In addition, we added back in the fire rescue vehicle from fire impact fees. Uh, for us, it's a matter of you know the timing of when the, uh, the, the fire training uh, facility will be completed and the timing of purchasing the uh, fire rescue vehicle for fire impact fees and when those will be available to us. And so all funds proposed, uh, there's a bit of a scrivener error here. This should be 1 million, uh, correction, 1 billion, 96 million, 630,729. That's the number that you see on the page that actually follows. 
Overall, the general fund proposed budget increased to $228 million. The proposed budget, again, uh, includes a millage rate of 5.3694, which is no change from the current year. And the, the fire service assessment increases from 62 to 70 percent recovery, uh, which was discussed last meeting. Again, we have a 5 percent increase in water and sewer rates that was approved by resolution earlier in the fiscal year, 5 percent in stormwater rates. It's a $7 increase, which again was approved uh, as part of the proposed stormwater rate resolution. And we also have the increase in solid waste rates. Again, the overall budget, adjusted proposed budget is $1,096,630,729. The, there's no change to the AMP uh, except for the addition of the uh, fire impact of uh, the fire vehicle uh, for uh, that we paid for from impact fees. And so the general fund balance, as we discussed, nothing has really changed here other than the dollar value of the budget by adding some of the information that we've added in here with the additional police officer uh, as well as uh, I believe the sidewalk crew that we added in here as well. The, uh, so the net is a adjusted proposed budget of 231 million, uh, correction, I think it's 233 million, 400, a little over 500 million, 500,000 dollars. First public hearing again is scheduled for Thursday, September 7, 2023 at 5.05 p.m. Second final public hearing is scheduled for September 21st at 5.05 p.m. And we also have another, an additional budget uh, workshop if the City Council so desires next week uh, at 2 o'clock on Tuesday, the 21st, 22nd, sorry, 22nd. And that's it, if we have any questions. Thank you very much. I'll now open up for uh, any council uh, discussions regarding uh, either this information or what we received last week. Council member Steinke. Thank you. I, ju I just had a, a, a few things. Um, and I, if, can I share all three and then you handle them in any, any, any way you want? Your choice. Um, <clears throat> one was uh, with the dollars that were, that have been set aside in the past uh, for sidewalks, um, certainly appreciative of the of the funding available to uh, continue the expansion of our sidewalks through the city. If we could have a little, maybe just a quick uh, update of whether we used up all of the dollars from last year uh, and uh, put all of the sidewalks in place that were planned, um, and if not, if those dollars are rolling over in addition to the additional dollars now for 23-24, they're set aside for sidewalks. A similar uh, thought on the on the parks. We had both the go bond uh, dollars being used uh, for park creation. Uh, we had um, sparkle budget for uh, for renovation of the parks that we uh, currently had. Um, and so, as we continue those efforts, 23-24, if we get kind of an update on where we are with those go bond projects, um, uh, estimated completion date, dollars left over being uh, used for parks in 23-24. And last was just a suggestion uh, as it related to um, maybe uh, uh, defraying some costs with the uh, thought that our, our, our utilities um, billing, uh, um, many people choose to use e-billing uh, where there's no mailing required, uh, obviously no manpower in producing the bills or getting them out, uh, and then also in the receipt of payment um, being done electronically doesn't require any processing checks or whatever and so the just a thought of um, either offering an incentive uh, um, for uh, for using the e-bill versus uh, versus traditional payment uh, or the potential to um, have a service fee uh, for the postage and all of the other requirements to to do manual billing those are just three points Okay, so let's go with number one, uh, set aside uh, at, in the past for sidewalks. Uh, let's see, I think uh, Persidus is here that can actually speak to the, the timing of the sidewalks and where we are with uh, the funds that we have set aside the last two years, which I think is close to a little over four and a half million dollars uh, that we've set aside over the last two years for sidewalks. 
And then we'll get into the go bond and the sparkle afterwards. Thank you. So, Percy Zambrano, Interim Public Works Director. So, as we discussed in the previous workshop, uh, we're trying to get uh, uh, contracting out, delivering of sidewalks. Let me see. Okay, so we're trying to, we follow North, the UEP. So we were trying to build sidewalks on North 2 that was completed. Uh, that's the uh, program we're, we're trying to address. So we, uh, council approved 2.5 million in 2021, 2.5 million in 2022. So we have about 4 million, I don't have the exact number right now, but we, have, we haven't spent the bulk of that money. We did, uh, built with our crew some sidewalk segments at the city's expense to uh, uh, provide pedestrian access to certain uh, parks like Cultural Park, uh, Gator Circle. So we bought, we built those using our funding. But uh, the one that we want to contract out is are the segments that you see on the screen. Uh, we, we are only doing one side of the road we think it will be in the five million ballpark, the cost to build those uh, sidewalk segments. There are a couple in the South Cape and that will assist the city to complete the one mile distance from schools within the city when we complete this. So we have that money in, in, in reserve because we haven't spent them. Well, it's not in reserve. It will be in the, it's, in the it's in the project. We have a project that we haven't uh, entered into a contract, as we discussed the other day. So we're moving that forward. So the, 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 um, the thought was is that in, in the hopes that we would be able to have the manpower, the time, to use those dollars that we've got set aside and the additional dollars that we have now. And if we, if we didn't, would those dollars that we're setting aside for si the additional money setting aside for sidewalks now, would those roll over again, if you would, into 2025, if we aren't able to use them to complete the sidewalks this year? In 2024, yes, they'll move into fiscal year 2024. And then if we, if we can't use those dollars for the sidewalks through 2024, will those <coughs> dollars remain allocated to that effort for 2025? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, with respect to the GO bond, uh, I think uh, maybe it was three, four weeks ago, we had given in an update on the, GO, on the GO bonds and the potential timing of completion. Uh, we'll have Mr. Klingen come up here and give you a, a brief overview of what, what parks we have left to do and the ones that are currently in construction. Okay. Thank you. Paul Klingen, uh, Director of Capital Improvements. Uh, so the uh, Sunshade uh, projects is that's almost 100% complete. Culture and Gator is complete uh, with the exception of some additional amenities and some of the landscaping that council asked for. We're, we're running those numbers. Uh, Sands and Coviello are almost complete ready for potential um, uh, groundbreaking and uh, Geofreed and Del Prado are complete. Yellow Fever Creek and Lake Kennedy was there yesterday. Those are in process. We have Crystal Lake that is ready to go out to bid. Uh, that's in procurement. That's going out shortly here. Uh, same thing with the Festival Park and now Lake Mead is then the next park that may go out to bid. And we're still waiting for permits on Tropicana. That's a quick summary. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so with Operation Sparkle, we set aside funds for three parks this year. Uh, it was uh, Storm, Burton, and China, which, Northwest softball complex. Uh, as a result of the storm that hit us in September last year and the fact that we've been going through multiple inspections with FEMA, 
we haven't done anything on the sparkle side until we have the inspections have been done. And so we've been working on some of the improvements at some of the parks from a result of insurance from the damages that occurred at some of those parks. However, the remainder of it is not. Now, with regard to Sparkle, we're bringing forward a contract on August 30th for storm football, and we're expecting that we will have contracts for both Northwest and Burton before the end of the fiscal year in order to tie up the funds that are associated with Sparkle for this year. Okay, so last but not least, let me talk about my stuff. So, uh, in, when it comes to utilities and uh, incentives for getting on board, there's two parts to the equation. One, you can get a bill uh, emailed to you, in which case you're not sending a bill through the postal service, and uh, that's one part. And you have the ability to go online and pay if you so choose to go on online and pay, or you can just simply pay by uh, bank draft, or you can pay <coughs> by check, which is a multitude of different ways in order to pay us. Or you can just simply call us on the phone and do, do it through an IBR. All of which, in one form or another, helps to decrease the overall cost of processing a check or deposit through the system, but nevertheless still takes a an army in order to work up, you know, the, the processing of the information through our accounting system. So when you're looking at the cost of an email bill or a bill, let's just talk about a bill that actually goes through our system uh, and is mailed to you. It costs about 61.9 cents in order to mail one bill. Currently, we have 24,199 folks that are on the e-bill system, which represents 27.4% of the total number of bills that we send out. We have 72.6% that still are postal, go through the postal service. We send out information on a quarterly basis, a little cut sheet that goes into the bill that reminds everybody it's, uh, you know, it's simply healthier for the environment if you get it on e-bill. And periodically, we have people that sign up for e on e-bill. And we started out on the e-bill side when we flipped over to uh, the new uh, utility billing system. We actually had zero. And so over the course of the last year and a half, uh, we're up to uh, 25,000, cl close on to 25,000 that are on e-bill. So at 61.9 cents and for, per bill, on average, that comes out to $8 for a, 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 uh, an account holder on an annual basis. Uh, cost uh, overall with the current 64,000 accounts that we have, cost about $476,000 to mail the bills uh, on, a, a, on a budget that's a little over $100 million with regard to the utility system. And on average, uh, on a monthly bill for uh, on an average monthly bill at 101.87 cents, uh, 61.9 cents, or six, I should say six, yeah, 0.619 cents is about 0.006% uh, of the total cost of the, or whatever the billing is. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't go look at an incentive. That's not the, that's not the point of the, the information I'm providing to you. It's, it's really what type of incentive that we would be looking in for, and whether it's a monetary incentive or whether it's a, a penalty if you stay on paper bills. And so we'll, we, we can certainly look at that, uh, but my experience with trying to do incentives in the past, it's, it has not worked out real well, but we, we can certainly look at it again. Okay, it sound, if, if I heard you right, it's, it's, about, it's about a half a million dollars a year? For the current number of bills that we currently mail, yes. Okay. Well, just my my uh, my thought would be a uh, half a million dollar savings um, might be a good thing to take a look at, yeah. somehow, some way. And we can, and we and we certainly can do that. Okay, thanks. Is that everything, Council Member Stone? That's it. Thank you. Is that all your questions answered. Mm -hmm. All right, Council Member Long. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yep. So, Mr. City Manager, I guess I would just ask you to elaborate on uh, internally. I guess your decision to backfill the $3 million on projects that you'd previously deemed, um, well, you, you previously rejected or, or left on the cutting room floor um, and why that those decisions were made and whether they were made based on your observation of whether we actually needed them versus wanted them um, versus whether that decision was purely because there wasn't money available. 
to understand the, the, the question? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, uh, throughout this process, you know, there's a city manager proposed budget and then that gets released to you all. And then it's up to you all to determine whether or not I got the priorities the same as you see them in the, in the organization and for the community. So as I went through the submittal from the department heads, um, I went through the decision making. I looked at uh, the situation that was presented by each department. I looked at the funding that we had available and I, I had to make cuts. I, had, there, I could not approve everything. I think as if you all remember, I know we went through those uh, individually. There was some $17 million worth of stuff that just could not be approved and we sent that, that over. Uh, subsequent to the city manager's budget uh, being released, we received some additional funding. And at the last budget workshop, um, the council had expressed, uh, not as a body, not as a whole, um, but some individual council members had uh, questioned some of the uh, holdbacks or the things that I did not, did not approve and made statements to the effect that those were uh, priorities that they saw uh, be included. So, I thought uh, in the decision making process, I put my budget forward. Council was uh, engaged us in a discussion. Uh, we did have the additional revenue uh, set aside. Um, so I, I decided to take those revenues and apply them to the individual needs that were uh, discussed by certain council members. Uh, we're sitting here today. Uh, if, if that again, just like I said at the last meeting, uh, if, if we didn't get it right, uh, the whole point of our budget workshops is to work together. You know, at the come October 1st, there'll be a balanced budget, and I believe it should be a collaborative effort between the city administration and the city council. So uh, if, if we got it wrong again, or if we got, uh, there's a couple of tweaks that you all would like to have, uh, today's the appropriate discussion. Sure. The reason I ask is I, is, is I don't know that there was a consensus with regards to the, the public safety components of this and the employees, the FTEs. Um, and so, and I certainly don't want to undermine you if that, if in, in your judgment and your discretion, because I also on the other end, I don't think that when you made that decision to, um, to not approve those requests originally, that they were based on uh, in any part financial. Because I think uh, as a whole, we've spoken again and again about the importance of public safety. So I certainly would think that if you really deemed the, them necessary, that you would have found a way in their original, as part of their original request um, to approve them if you, if you saw fit. So reversing that back then, um, just because we have the money now, I, I didn't. I wanted to make sure that we weren't just filling that in just because it was a request from from public safety, and that hey, we've we've got the money, so let's 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 fulfill the request. When originally, uh, that might not have been your your original uh, opinion. I think that's a fair question, and it's it's really a, a what if statement. So, what if I had the additional three million before I released the budget? Would it look exactly like uh, we have today? Um, I wouldn't have had the input of council, so um, perhaps the FSA might not have not have been as high. Um, but you know, there were requests from council members expressed. Um, you know, I found a way to accommodate uh, those requests with those revenues, and uh, so that's what we did coming into today. So it's really a you know, a hypothetical that, that I didn't have an opportunity to put together, but I understand the basis of your Yeah, question. my point is that those revenues could also be used for various other things if we didn't necessarily need those positions. That's, that's the point I'm making. And so, um, more particularly, I guess an easier one to pick a bone with would be the, the bay doors. It's a couple hundred thousand, but I guess the question would be, uh, is it something that's really a critical need? Uh, is that, I guess, setting a, a precedent moving forward that we've, we're basically obligating ourselves to retrofit uh, the existing stations with, with these similar types of doors um, because, of course, when you multiply that, those numbers add up as well. So I, I don't know just on a small scale whether that, that would be something I would have immediately allocated that additional $3 million towards. I'm not saying you, that you're wrong. We all up here might have a different opinion. Um, but, I mean, just, just poking at that a little bit, I don't know, for example, are, are the bay doors, are we putting them since apparently response time was one of the reasons that that we had brought up the need. Um, are, are we installing the bay doors on the front and the rear? Uh, because if we are, maybe we don't need to install them on the rear because that's not a time issue. And so could we save money there? Those are all small things with regards to, in the grand scheme of things, a, a minuscule uh, project. But um, that's the reason I asked if, if, if your basis when you originally were re requested these items was, was in some part 
material with regards to the need of the request versus just, I wish I could, but we don't have the money. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Shepard. Yeah, we uh, spoke uh, earlier on the sidewalk budget, um, and it was just said that we have money in that budget that wasn't spent yet. Um, my guess would be that if we haven't spent what's in that account already, and we do have projects that we want to do, my guess is they would take six months to a year to do. Instead of adding more money in that sidewalk budget, why don't we take that money and put it into something where we can feel the results right away, uh, like in curbing or beautification, instead of just throwing more money in the mm -hmm. sidewalk budget, when by time the money we have in that budget already is spent, we'll be into next year, where we'll have next year's budget to add more money to it. So just something I want to throw out there. Um, you know, we have beautification that is talked about for years and years, how we're lacking with beautification. Uh, we're, and we have this curbing machine now. We need a lot of curbing throughout the city. I think if that money was not put into the sidewalks, if there's already money in that account that hasn't even been spent yet, throw that money into things like that, that we can see uh, an instant, um, you know, response and value added to our city right away, instead of the money just sitting in an account that might not be touched for another year when we'll be in the next year's account. Just a thought. Thank you. Councilmember Welsh. Yeah, just to, to touch on what you were saying, Councilmember Shepard, on um, looking at this, the city of beautification has about three quarters of a million in this new proposed, which I believe the city manager said we could use for beautification, like cleaning up some of the medians and stuff like that. But what I think what he did was just added one million into sidewalks, which as, as you know, we're deficient on sidewalks as well. So I, I, I get what you're saying that we wanna get these jobs done, but I think by having that million in here instead of scrapping it completely is going to keep us, when we do catch up, still having that fund in there. Because as we know, the, the cost of sidewalks are getting greater and greater. And um, I'm glad that he was able to put it back in, but I'm also glad that he put almost an equal amount into beautification without it being earmarked specifically for sidewalks. So that could be replacing landscaping. It could be adding curbing. And you said some of it might be staffing so it could be staffing towards you know no, i agree what i'm stating is i want to keep investing in sidewalks what i'm saying is throwing additional money in that budget that's not even going to be touched because we already have a backlog why not put that money to something else what i brought forward is my ideas there might be other things that other councilmen want to see accomplished with that money that we can have instant gratification rather than just putting more money into an account when there's not even projects yet. There's already money in that account that hasn't been spent. Staff has showed us the projects. They she just showed us the projects that they plan on spending that money, but it's probably going to take six months to a year to spend it. So to have additional money is just sitting there for a year and they're doing nothing. What I'm saying is I'd rather see them put towards something where we can have something done immediately. Uh, an immediate need doesn't necessarily have to be the needs that I brought up. There could be other needs. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Councilmember Cummings. Yeah. Um, I'm in agreement with Councilman Shepard because I know that when I was talking to the city manager, uh, Mike Ilches, and we were talking today, uh, you were basically mentioning about the trees. So FEMA didn't replace any of the trees that we lost. And we do know the trees are very expensive. So the beautification, I think, is very important. That's what brings people here, right? It's in that paradise feel. So with that being stated, if we have the money there, I'm in agreement that we start kind of getting Cape, having that beautification back, which is <laughs> the question I wanted to ask you, Michael, is how many trees did we lose in the hurricane? And do you kind of, or a rough idea, um, and a rough idea of a cost to replace what we did lose that FEMA's not covering? My rough idea, um, said with a joke, is it's more than one. 
<laughs> oh, I, I honestly have not had a you chance. You should run for office. What's <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have not had a chance, honestly, to discuss with our arborist, Omar, um, how many, but I know he, uh, for the CRA, went through the entire South Cape and documented losses. He had his inspectors go through all the medians and document losses. Uh, I believe they also tried to quantify in the parks uh, documented losses. So I, I, I think the number's out there. Um, but, you know, the... <clears throat> This is a need that, you know, when you're prioritizing everything in the city, th this is one of those, you know, um, you know, but for this additional money probably would not be, there probably would not be an extra 700,000 to, re to replace trees in, in the needs of everything. We would seek to get grants or we'd look for some out outside sources. And the beautification needs that you all individually discuss are, are different. Um, some of you spoke during the, the budget retreat uh, about planting more trees at the parks because the ones that are being built don't seem to have the quantity or, or size uh, limit. Some of you, uh, as Council Member Shepard just discussed, is more about medians. Other ones are more about city facilities. Um, so, and then there's this been discussion about, um, you know, pressure washing, just cleaning up Areas. Absolutely, yeah. So there's there's all kinds of beautification that everybody has been discussing that have previously been you know unfunded, and so uh, I saw this as an opportunity to, to to take what was not publicly discussed as an as an individual need, but to create a, a, a new bucket of funding to address those items that would otherwise improve the appearance of our city in any in any way we want to go about it. Well, I just want to make it clear, I'm not wanting to follow the money towards trees. I'm using that as an example. The FEMA didn't even uh, replace that. That's just one major thing that right. was they, lost. Right, they do not cover landscaping. I exactly. So I guess, you know, feeding off of what Councilman Shepard was stating is it is very important that we get the beautification back up and running, you know, due to you know, medians or is it, you know, due to adding more shade in the park areas, adding prettier trees, adding more, you know, landscaping, whatever it may be. I guess uh, my point is that that's what I'm also looking at, um, not just all the trees, but adding more flavor back to our city, so. Thank you. Anything okay. else? No. Council Member Hayden. I think the beauty of the last couple of years is that the sidewalk projects and the median beautification projects have been able to work mm -hmm. hand in hand with each other to improve quality of life for the city. Um, I don't want anybody to get the impression that uh, because we've allocated a million dollars for sidewalks or proposed, the sidewalk project work has stopped. Um, it hasn't. Um, I believe it was noted in last week's presentation that we did about 14 miles of sidewalks. Um, can somebody update me so that no one gets uh, the wrong idea that we're not continuing to to build sidewalks in our community? Is there someone, Persidis, can you update on us on the projects that are currently in the works? Right now we have the crew building sidewalks on Miramar. This is a CDBG granted project. Uh, as I mentioned recently, we built links to Cultural Park, to Gator Circle. Uh, we, we finished the one on 10th, Yes, they don't stop. I mean, we have uh, multiple, and as I also mentioned, with the projects that we are trying to get out uh, to a, cons a contractor, we will complete the sidewalks within one mile, and then we will move to the two mile radius. And we're within what, maybe a year or two of finishing that, those sidewalk projects within a mile of schools? Once we contract, we're getting pretty close, right? Yes, we're getting close. Once we contract these eight mile uh, worth of sidewalks with outside uh, assistance, then we will be there. Also, we did sidewalks uh, on Cedars, connecting to the Charter School North. Uh, we're working on s also with our internal crews on sidewalks on Northwest. Fourth uh, Street. That's the the roadway that connects between Cedars to Chiquita. 
So yes, we have a plan that we're working in tandem with having the same manpower doing curbing. I think, um, you know, a few years ago, our sidewalk projects were ma mainly funded by grants and we were falling behind. Um, so now that we've been able to at least catch up and continue with these projects, it's because of the council's commitment to safety as well as beautification, <coughs> these projects have been able to continue. Um, we don't know what the economy is going to be like in the next couple of years. We don't know if these uh, types of funds will be available to us. Um, you know, this grant funding that we have, you know, that's, that's where, it, where we're at right now. We, you know, we have to fund it through our uh, general fund at, at the moment. So to risk not continuing the momentum of a project that we know back in 2016 told us that only 8% of our roads had sidewalks and the gains that we're making now, I, I certainly wouldn't want to be for um, not keeping that money in there because at some point over the next year we're going to catch up. And, and I also don't want anybody to get confused that these median projects can be done overnight either. Um, they take time to do, to build plans, to get people um, that may want to invest in, in them in the community besides what, what we may want to provide. So I think the fact that we're continuing to fund these projects, um, the medians or sidewalks for our city needs to continue because it does go back to quality of life and public safety. I, you know, I don't want Lee County to continue to be leading the state in the number of pedestrian and cycling deaths or Florida to be in the top three in the country in the same statistics. So if our city can do our part to help lower those numbers, uh, they're high, they remain high for our city. And every project that we're able to finish um, is important to our safety and quality of life. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Uh I think got a couple other lights on, but those individuals already spoke, so I guess I'll jump in here real quick first. Um, I had a couple questions uh, on these topics and then what was in the previous. I think it's important so we know exactly what was in the previous <coughs> proposal, city manager's proposal, when it comes for um, sidewalks and medium beautification. Let's take the sidewalk discussion first. <clears throat> first off, I know that we have two funding streams to complete sidewalks in the city. One is like presented here today through the general fund and the other one's grant opportunities that we have. So let's talk about <clears throat> how much monies for FY24 are we expecting for grant opportunities first for sidewalks and then after that We'll expand that discussion with the general fund dollars. Fin finance will have the grant numbers budgeted for next year. Yep. And also, what have we put in the budget uh, for sidewalks prior to uh, our budget discussions? What that dollar amount is that was initially put in the FY24 budget? Uh, we have $1.3 million in for grant funded sidewalks and zero for um, general fund funded sidewalks. We had allocated some dollars towards uh, sidewalks, I thought, in the original FY24 budget. No. Maybe it, none at all? Zero. Zero? Correct. No? Okay. All right. Uh, so that, uh, that changes my perspective a little bit. Um, we, we, we had discussed, uh, because we were behind, you know, behind on getting this year's allocation done, um, kind of just take using this year kind of as a as a pause um, and then at one point um, we thought that we would be able to to put some additional money back into the sidewalks after the July 1st numbers came out uh, but we, we weren't able to make that work okay all right and let me make sure I have a clear understanding uh, what I got out of the earlier discussion is in the FY 22 budget uh, we put $2.5 million in for sidewalks. And then FY23, we had $2.5 million for a total of $5 million. But it sounds like we've only uh, spent about $1 million of that. Did I hear that 
uh, correctly from Mercedes when she was up here? Approximately one million. Mm -hmm. And then my next question is, um, so we got about four million sitting there. So in two years, we've only spent a million dollars. Um, what, what do we think a good uh, guess would be how much we're going to spend in the FY24 budget? And the reason I ask that, I guess I'm kind of like some of my other colleagues. I don't mind putting dollars at something if we can get something accomplished. But if we have a two-year track record where we've only spent a million or five million, but we keep throwing money at it, um, and we have a lot of needs in our city, I'm just wondering why we're doing that. So I want to make sure that if we got four, we're going to add another million. Can you convince me that we're going to spend $5 million between now and the end of FY24? I, I think we could have spent the $4 million. The issue was it was not a good unit price bid. So we, we could have issued, I think the unit <coughs> price bid came in at like eight. 16. 16 million. Mm -hmm. So for those eight miles, so it was basically $2 million a mile. So, I mean, we, we could have wow. spent the money and, and contracted with a contractor, but it would have been 2 million a mile. Okay. And to us, it, that's just, so we, we have a, we have to balance, you know, the council's priority of the, we want sidewalks put in with, are we getting a good price? So we have conflicting kind of public interest that we run into when it comes to executing. Um, and so that's where we wound up with this year. We, it went out for bid. All, all eight miles that were out there went out, but what came back was just astronomical. Okay. And, you know, obviously, you know, we have issues with the hurricane, issue with labor, issue with, you know, concrete delivery, you know, time frame to deliver eight miles of sidewalk. So they're pricing in, you know, escalators and labor, escalators and material. Um, so I, we could have scaled back the quantity, but I don't think we would have been in it looking very well if we had awarded two miles, you know, two miles of sidewalk for four million dollars. Mm -hmm. So it becomes one of those, hold on a second, what's going on in the market? Get with the vendor, find out why they bid so high. Um, so I, I don't think it was an, an issue of could we have spent it. I think we could have, but it, it just wasn't prudent use mm -hmm. of funds. Didn't sound like we were getting a good return on investment. So, um, so we, if you did appropriate this, we would just the bid, the amount, the quantity would be a, would be more. Mm -hmm. But we still have to make sure we're getting uh, right. good good use of funds. I understand that. Um, you know, m my thing is, I just want to make sure that we're just not putting monies in a pot that we're not utilizing when we have other needs throughout the city. So that that's the only thing I want to make sure. Um, but I didn't hear really an answer to my question. Um, do you think that we're going to be able to spend $5 million between now and, and the fiscal year 24? We're, for, we, for in sidewalks? fiscal year 24. We are retooling the, uh, the, the proposal to go back out on the street. Okay. All right. If, if, we, get, if we end up with something different that is, again, $2 million a mile, I mean, we know what it costs us to build sidewalks. Uh, we've done this before. L listen, we, we can always shift delivery methods. It, uh, when, when Challenger Middle School was constructed along Trafalgar, um, there was an, an incident where a child was struck on a bicycle there and, and every, the council said we need sidewalks immediately on Trafalgar. And we went and hired a contract crew of, of temporary staff just to build that sidewalk. Right. So if we still believe that that's the best option to get to get it in the ground and for the cheapest cost, we may have to rethink how, how we're uh, approaching delivering the product. Right. So we're, we're open to options, we're, but they are redoing the bid package to try and uh, get a little bit tighter bids or a little bit uh, market centric. Um, and, but we'll, we won't know until they come in. And I guess it's always on the table since we do know what it costs us to do it in-house if worst case scenario even if we had to hire an additional crew and it's cost effective and we can get it done cheaper, I guess that's an option as well. Yeah, that's what we did on Trafalgar. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you know, I have no problem supporting uh, the extra million dollars as long as we can uh, show a uh, return on investment when we put monies somewhere. But I will say next year, uh, this will definitely be one item that I'll be taking a look at closely uh, because I don't want to have five million 
next next year and we have this discussion, we got four million sitting there. Uh, I wouldn't advocate putting any more monies uh, to that initiative until we until we uh, get that number down and spend that monies. So, you know, I'll support it for this year, but I will look at it fairly closely next year to see where we are uh, because our track record the last few years uh, hasn't uh, hasn't been uh, uh, very good when when you take a look at the expenditures aspect of it. Median improvements, uh, where were we prior to the budget discussions with adding this uh, 774, where does that put us? We have a million 30,000 that was set aside for median improvements. Uh, we also had the 300,000 for basically uh, to go out there and replace things uh, it, as well as yeah, four hundred thousand for Kirby. And then we're gonna add the seven seventy four for a variety of city beautification type projects. Seven seventy four for a variety, yes. And I, I kinda of agree with Councilmember Cummings a little bit. I know we lost some trees throughout the city um, that we all know that FEMA will not reimburse. So that's definitely uh, something I think we should take a look at and uh, make sure that uh, you know, with this extra monies here that we're allocating, maybe that's something we could look at to make sure we can get our existing uh, medians back up to par uh, to pre-hurricane conditions. Um, moving on, uh, the three firefighters minimum staffing uh, says 380,000. Uh, when does that staffing occur? Is that right after the uh, physical year uh, begins here in October or is it later on in the year? It's immediate. It's to get the it's to get the fire department to a minimum staffing. Okay. Um, the 425 for the bay doors. Um, my recollection of the discussion that we had last week was <clears throat> uh, this was more than a want than a need. Uh, I think that we had asked, uh, and I'll let I'll let the fire chief maybe uh, refresh my memory if you would like to, but. Uh, uh, it sounded like all the doors were in working order. It was just a different style door that we wanted to put up. If I recall correctly, the 425 is just one station as well, so they were pretty expensive. Um, so so uh, I guess my question is, do you feel this is really a need or is it a want? Uh, good afternoon, Mayor Council, Ryan Lamb, Fire Chief. Uh, so specific to the bay doors, um, so response times is a, is a part of this. Um, a, our doors go up now, they're not super slow, but they do, they do go up. The biggest issue here with this that we've seen is that if we do manage a number of doors at our numerous fire stations across the city, and especially our old ones, they break frequently, and then it's expensive to keep them going. So this is more of an effort to reduce operating and maintenance costs. Um, we've talked to a number of folks from around the, another number of fire departments from around the country that have had these doors for 15 years and have spent nothing on operating and maintenance costs. My staff is giving me um, costs of what we spent on our maintenance contracts with for our, our doors the last uh, last year. Um, so that's what this effort is, is an opportunity to try and make an investment to reduce operating and maintenance costs in addition to the other benefits of getting them open a little bit quicker and a, and a nicer aesthetic with that. Uh, the 425,000 is an estimate for one station. Uh, I think it's a conservative estimate, um, but we wanted to make sure there was enough there to make sure that happens. But that was for six doors and that would approximately do one station. Need not a one. Uh, I think it's an investment into reducing our operating and maintenance costs. Uh, something that you know, I think uh, as a city, uh, we're going to function. Our trucks are going to run down the road if we have these doors or not. But okay. uh, it's just an effort. Like I said, we're spending a lot. We have uh, our older stations were built in the early '90s, still have some of the original doors on them, and so we're just investing a, quite a bit of money into keeping those going. So that's just what the effort was. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to. Uh... Uh, the one patrol officer, I think that's pretty uh, straightforward. I think there was one officer that was cut, so I, I agree with that. Uh, increase in the city attorney's budget. Um, if I recall correctly, it was more than the 250, Mr. City Attorney, that uh, was uh, actually requested. Uh, I think the 250 may just be the um, salary component. Is that correct? No, 250 is everything. Was that everything? That is everything. That includes the... The salary component, all the benefits associated with that, and also I think three other separate line items. Uh, one is technology, one is travel, and one for training. Okay. Uh, associated with you know that aspect of it. 
if, as soon as I asked the question, I remembered the answer. I, if I recall correctly, it was about $229,000. If you added up the salary and all the benefits, it was about the component for the salary increase. 220 or 236. Yeah. So thereabouts. Thereabouts. Um, you know, one of the things that we talked about uh, last week, um, and you did provide a little bit of data um, today, um, not necessarily the exact data I was looking for. The second paper that you gave me today was uh, a little more helpful. Uh, but you and I had a discussion today on that. Uh, I know that uh, here at the city, uh, we are in the process of doing a uh, classification and compensation study. My understanding should be done uh, end of uh, September, sometime in October, um, you know, like we have in the past. Any uh, salary discussions that we have uh, made a decision on, it was strictly based on data that we've either uh, received um, or a methodology, the 75 percentile uh, met methodology. I know we've used that as long as I've been here. Um, so that data is kind of critical for me to see uh, where that 75th percentile will, will land us, uh, not only in your department, but all of the non-bargaining uh, employees uh, that are a part of that uh, compensation and, and uh, classification uh, study. For me personally, uh, I have no problem taking the 250, kind of setting it to a side until we have that uh, study completed and then see exactly how we are going to allocate that 250. Um, actually, it's a little less than that, you know, because the 250 has some of the office equipment and things like that. Take that out, I don't have a problem with uh, proving that, but just, just the compensation uh, aspect of the request, uh, I think we should, for me, I, I would like to see the, uh, the study first, uh, because in all honesty, that, that, that dollar may be higher than what you're asking for. It could, it could be more monies. It, it could be, but, um, and I was very conservative in the number that I proposed, and I did that intentionally. Um, recognizing that you know this is a shift this is an adjustment uh and recognizing that i've i've been in having the opportunity to at least see some of the salaries that are out there and more importantly in lee county so that's why i, I try to keep it conservative uh, at least for this first budgetary process um i'm new uh didn't want to give too much of a sticker shock so i was trying to be very mindful of that right and, and i, I just know what the numbers are out there so i I was trying to be conservative in that regard, recognizing where where the council wants the, the office to go, where I want the office to be, uh, and to accomplish that goal. Yeah. And I think we're on the same page. I told you that earlier yep. today. Uh, I think uh, uh, when, you, when you take a look at the, uh, the dollars, um, to me it's pretty obvious. Uh, I just want to make sure we get it right. We got the data to really show where we need to be. Um, I just don't want to kind of throw a dart in the darkness and see where it hits. Yeah, and, and as I, and, and I'll be more than happy to convey that to all of you at this point in time, you know, it, it's something that I'm going to have to evaluate in terms of the office and, and to really address, you know, where, where, where we intend, where I intend the office to be in terms of its expertise and its knowledge and the ability to work with all the individual departments. And, and that to me is critical. Mm -hmm. And that's going to really shift and set the goals of the office and the city as far as I'm concerned. That's, I'm telling you that right now. So I will be evaluating all that aspect to ascertain, you know, what is the best mechanism by way of which to accomplish that, and that's going to be done through the dollars and cents. Right. So for me, for that particular item, like I said, I have no problem adding it to the uh, budget. Uh, I, I, for me, I'd like to kind of put it as a placeholder, and then maybe once the compensation and classification study is completed, uh, you may be able to get us a little more information on city similar size, exactly what. Uh, the attorneys one, two, and three. It could include paralegals. I don't know if you're looking at your administrative staff. I really don't know. Um, that's the only reason I'm a little hesitant because I don't exactly know the plan that, that, you're, you're, that you're looking at. Not that I'm trying to micromanage you or your department, but before I al allocate dollars, I'd like to have a good understanding what I'm allocating. That's all. I understand. Um, I think that could be achieved, uh, you know, probably the first part of October once the wage study comes back, and uh, then we could have a committee of the whole meeting and, and have that discussion. And there again, we may find it, uh, 
we may have to look at maybe the subsequent years, maybe trying to get that dollar amount up to where you think it needs well, to be. Well, let, let me assure you of the one thing. If, if the salary and wage study comes back and it's higher, I, I have no intention on asking for more. I, right. I really don't. I'm telling you that right now. I, I did this for a reason, recognizing where where the other municipalities that I looked at. So even if it were to be more, I have no intention on seeking that. Um, certainly I will address that in the next budgetary process, but I'm not doing that now. Right. That's why the number you see is the number you see, and that's the number you're going to get, uh, okay. if, even if it's more. So okay. I, I, that is just what I'm, the way I'm viewing it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, move on to uh, the rescue unit vehicle. I think we took that out, and then we've added it back in, so I'm glad to, to see that. Mr. City Manager, uh, you and I had had a discussion uh, as we know, these particular units, we get a little quicker uh, than we do our fire or regular fire trucks. Fire trucks are taking about 40 months. Uh, these type of vehicles are about 12. Uh, I know that the uh, chief's uh, long-term plan is to try to get one of these particular units uh, uh, up and running each physical year for the next several years. And I know you and I had had a discussion to possibly uh, especially since you don't have to pay for it until you take uh, uh, possession or, or you get the vehicle, um, possibly being a little proactive in ordering two vehicles instead of one. Where 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 did you find yourself? Uh, and I know you had talked about some other fleet needs as well regarding that. Yeah, we we have uh, budgeted in there one this uh, with this go round, and we also have on tomorrow night's agenda. Uh, purchase of another unit, but that's a that's a full pumper, right? So we're trying to be proactive where where we can can gain. But this, as we sit here on this one, it's funding uh, for one, correct, Mark? It, it is, and and just as a reminder, uh, we realize that the actual cash out the door doesn't happen in a until a future period. However, you have to have the cash available when you actually order it, and so the funding needs to be available when we order it because we're appropriating something, and so. We're appropriating funding in order to be able to purchase it at some future date. Okay. That ensures that the funds are available when you actually make the order as opposed to ordering something and then maybe you don't when it's done. Right. Yeah, my thing is uh, when it comes to public safety, you know, our police and fire, uh, we all know that it takes a while to get an individual up and running. What I don't want to happen is we find ourselves because of the times that we are in when it comes to purchasing vehicles. Uh, I'd rather be proactive than reactionary. I don't want to, you know, bring five police officers on and it's gonna, they're going to have to wait eight months to get a car. So that's the only reason I bring that up, you know. So, and I know that's probably with uh, a lot of things when it comes to our fleet, uh, not just public safety, but public safety, uh, you know, as we all know, that's, that's a priority. So that's why I mentioned that. Uh, and that's all I have. So I will go to Council Member Stunky. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councilmember Shepard uh, brought things around uh, based on my initial questions, and I, what my kind of what my wonderment was is if 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 we had more money set aside, then hands could do the work, so to speak, whether it was our own hands or whether it was hiring third-party contractors to do the work, uh, and. Um, when it was said that we were just looking at putting a pause on uh, the sidewalk money, if you will, not having any in the budget for this year and then placing this million towards that, um, the pause would only be in additional funding, not a pause in the actual work itself. The work would still continue. And as I understand it from our conversation yesterday, um, the uh, the, the actual, our own hands, our city hands that are doing the work, th that kind of got split between the curb crew and the sidewalk crew, which may have slowed down the amount of sidewalk that could be done with those same hands, so to speak. And that might have been one of the reasons why the dollars weren't spent on the sidewalks, because we put the actual physical ability to do the work uh, more toward uh, the curbing efforts. Is that right? That, that, is, that is correct. We're we're trying to have, instead of having two dedicated sidewalk crews, we're trying to have one dedicated sidewalk crew that can attack the grants. Uh, one crew would be shifted over to the curbing that would be ahead of the, the landscaping and the, the meeting improvements. And then we are going to lean on the private sector to fill in uh, the funding gap for 
was the, the funding for sidewalks is fairly consistent um, with grants. We typically are getting grants every year. The amount of the general fund money we get year over year differs. And so as you see today, there's a discussion about possibly not having it. So when you have that amount of volatility in any service provision, you know, having full-time staff, you know, they need a, a, a routine amount of work every day, right? And so if we're, if that's volatile and fluctuating, it's, we're not really suited well for that type of situation. Okay. Um, and so with that being said, then the, the additional million dollars that's uh, set aside for sidewalks, if in fact we don't have the hands um, and the capacity since we're working with uh, curbing and median improvement and whatnot, if those dollars could be uh, uh, put into uh, additional trees in the parks, uh, like has been already mentioned with the thought that um, FEMA didn't, you know, didn't provide any replacement for all that we lost. If we need more than that, 774, uh, I would also support, as we've heard of here, those dollars being slid over towards that. If we, if, if we don't see ourselves uh, being able to actually do the work that that million dollars would provide for sidewalks, Instead of just rolling it over into the next year, I'd rather see it in a more in a more immediate, um, you know, recognizable use through enhancing our parks, enhancing additional trees in our medians, beautification of the medians, uh, right of ways. So, that's just uh, where I came out on that. And the last was uh, from this um, uh, backup material that we got today, uh, as it relates to uh, the attorney comparisons and whatnot. Um, do we have a box? Similar to this, that is where we sit right now, Cape Coral, that matches these six boxes for comparison? Uh, for, in the sense of what it is, the amount or the percentage? R right. Well, like it says Fort Lauderdale, and then it has, you know, the, the different the breakdown. Yeah, so in terms of the total overall, overall budget compared to what it is for the city attorney's budget, it's, it's what I'm seeking uh, based upon the additional 250 is 0.24 or a percentage point. It is how much? 0.24 of a percentage point. Okay. It, right now as it stands, if you, if you back out what I'm asking, it would be 0.22 percentage, uh, 0.22 of a percentage point. I'm asking for an additional 0.02% uh, of a percentage point. And so when I look at these other ones, I'm looking at 0 0.59, 0 0.52, 0 0.39, 0 0.69. Tallahassee is the closest one. We are below Tallahassee. If you were to adopt my, my budget as of, as of right now, what I'm asking for, it'll be 0.24. So we would still be the lowest on this page? We would. Okay. I, and, and again, I... I was very conservative in the number. I, I did that intentionally. I, I'm new. Um, thank you all for having me here. But I also <laughs> wanted to be very mindful that, you know, uh, there's a $1.1 $1 .1 billion budget. I get it. It's a big deal. Um, and I certainly recognize that, um, you know, there is, is going to be a shift. So I was being very conservative in that number, recognizing where my staff is and where other municipalities are. I included Miami Beach because I did the budget there. I'm very familiar with the budget there. And I know how much staff is there compared to how much staff is here and where their budget is and where my budget is. I, their, their staff is, is substantially more and they have a less budget. And we're talking about a, a municipality that's three by five miles. Um, so I, I just recognize the legal issues. And, and where I'm envisioning taking this office is to a, an area where me and a city manager work hand in hand and make sure that all of the legal issues are accomplished. Well, the, and the reason why uh, I wanted to make sure I was uh, understanding this correctly is because I'm, I'm with the mayor um, from the standpoint that um, if even with your uh, proposal, we're still too low, yeah. then we need to address that. I mean, we're a big city. We've got a lot of concerns. There are a lot of legal issues. We need to have the best of the best that are representing our citizens and our city. And even if with your proposal, it's still too low, then we need to look at reality and allow the funding that we need 
to be the best of the best. And, and I'm very mindful of the fact that space-wise, uh, I'm limited in space. Um, so I, I certainly understand that limitation and I'm very mindful of that. That's something that I'm gonna have to delve into over the next fiscal year. But at this point in time, I'm just trying to recognize the market. And, and this is the first step in recognizing the market. And then over the next year, I can then address some of the other concerns that I have in terms of being able to meet staffing requirements. Because at this point in time, there is no space. Um, I don't know if any of you have been there, but there, it's, it's limited. Um, so while I recognize that, you know, the, you know, and I'm going to go back to my former place, City of Miami Beach, they've got a staff of 24 attorneys. Uh, their budget is 781. They're actually increasing it by three full-time employees this upcoming fiscal year. So, but they have the ability to have space for those attorneys. I, I don't have that. I don't have that without there being a bigger discussion. So <laughs> all I'm at this point in time trying to do is to at least make sure that that i retain who i need to retain and then with with certain people leaving such as brian that i'm able to bring them in because right now across the river i've got a very competitive uh entity that that i'm very mindful of okay thank you council member shepherd yeah this is good conversation what we're learning is the value in spending the money properly and at the right time and what we don't see is the cost of when we don't invest in things then we feel the fire so for a lot of things came up so uh, another councilman talked about sidewalks and it came up our city manager stated that we overpaid to have a stretch of sidewalk done because of the need because of the danger we overpaid on a stretch and then we were also educated on that when bids went out for future sidewalk the price was just off the charts and we're all learning as citizens that um, after a hurricane that we're all taken advantage of with the price of roofs and the price of things from that we've all experienced in the hurricane. So, so if you're a citizen that wants a new roof because you want to change the color, it's not a great time to, to invest in a new roof because you're going to pay triple uh, what the normal price is. And I believe that's what we're going through with the sidewalks. We have companies that saw that we overpaid on a stretch of sidewalk, and then the city asked for them to bid on future sidewalks, and the price even escalated more. But it escalated more not just because we over we might have overpaid a bit on, on on the past project, but because of the times we're in right now, there's no one even available to do the jobs. So a lot of contractors are just throwing crazy numbers out there. We're all witnessing it with all different projects that we're trying to get done in our homes and our businesses. That when we, we ask for a bid for plumbing, electric, concrete, whatever it is, the prices are just off the charts. What I want to us to look at, you know, I gave the example of throwing it towards beautification because that's what we're told by all these different studies that are done in our city. It's been coming up for 20 years that that we lack beauty, that, you know, <laughs> Cape Carl's great, but, eh, you know, he needs to spruce up. So I'll bring up some other things. I I've, uh, went on a tour of the charter schools uh, the day before, uh, two days before school started with the city manager. And the reason uh, he brought me there to, to, to look at the schools is because last year when schools let out, and they went on summer vacation, I had mentioned to the city manager, man, our schools are looking rough. I mean, the charter schools were looking bad. There was literally lights hanging from the ceiling, uh, electrical lighting outside and inside. Uh, the buildings just looked bad. And when I went there for the, uh, the tour, you know, a couple days before school started, just the buildings being power washed, I thought they were repainted. I literally thought we repainted schools so and he showed me that light fixtures were being replaced and things like that what I what I want to bring to our attention is if I'm seeing that right now we're we're overpaying for sidewalks and our staff is diligently working on fixing that problem we have money in the account that hasn't been spent yet and we're looking at adding more money in that account I don't want that money to sit stagnant when I know there's other things out there that that are needed you know i brought up beautification well there's others just, 
just go to the CRA. Just look, look at our city in general. Do look at some of the other buildings that we're responsible for. There's some other things besides the charter schools that really looked rough, that need some attention. So what I'm saying is, I'm not saying it has to go to beautification. What I'm saying is some of these other things that we're letting deteriorate, the longer they deteriorate, it's going to cost that much more when staff tells us next year, hey, we need to fix this up or we need to fix that up. And when we say, wow, why is it costing that much? Well, you know, we, we didn't touch it for this many years. Look at the Yacht Club. That's a perfect example. We didn't touch it for, what, 40 years? You know, so what I'm saying is, you know, I've been down the downtown area and I walk down the streets there and I see some stuff that looks pretty rough. That's pretty embarrassing. And I know it doesn't cost millions to fix it or to just spruce it up a little bit like was done on our charter schools. We didn't spend a fortune on our charter schools, but we did enough to make it look, wow, you know, this looks a lot better. We fixed the lights, we power washed the buildings. The place literally looks like it was repainted. Um, our manager told me we're going to do some touch-up. There's some other things we're going to work on. That's, that's what I'm trying to let my other council members know about. We have this money. Rather than it sit in this account, it's not going to be spent. Um, even though sidewalks are important, until we get to the point where we can buy sidewalks at a fair price, I don't think we should just pay 10 times the going rate because it's important. I don't think any of us privately would do that at our own household when it comes to spending money out of our, our own accounts. To just say, oh, well, it's important. Let's overpay and pay 10 times the going rate. So, and I, and I don't feel that our staff's going to do that. I think our city manager, he already stated he's working on that. What I'm saying is let's look at some of these other things around the city that we can throw some money at to make our appearance look better. I mean, this is, you know, this is our reputation. I've, I, I know a lot of us have read articles that are written about Cape Coral. Uh, I don't want to repeat what's in these articles, but the same things keep getting repeated in all these different articles. We had a past city manager that paid a company to do a study what did they tell us? You know, so what I'm saying is, instead of letting money sit stagnant, let's use this money to spruce things up. Doesn't have to be for trees, doesn't have to be for medians. I'll bring up another one. I found out that um, staff gave me uh, what streets we're gonna repave that are on schedule. We are on schedule to repave Cape Coral Parkway from Jaquita to Sands. So what I would like to see done is if we're going to repave that stretch from Jaquita to Sands, let's get our curbing machine out and curb all them medians. Let's not repave that stretch and now when we repave it, paving we're educated on that we usually don't go back for another 20 years. I think I can make that statement that when we repave roads, we're not touching it for 20 years. Well, do we really want to go back and put curbing on in Cape Coral Parkway after we just repaved it? So that would be another thing that we can talk about, that maybe we want to spend that money on curbing for our curbing crew to go ahead and put curbing on the medians on Cape Coral Parkway. It is the entrance to our city. Get the curbing done so when, we, when this, curbing, when this uh, paving project takes place, Wow, guess what? Yeah, we damaged the street putting the curbing in, but, but here we are. What's coming is new paving for, for uh, Cape Coral Parkway. So what I'm saying is sometimes it costs more when we don't spend our money wisely. Sidewalks are important. They keep our citizens safe, our children safe. But at the same time, if the money's sitting there because we're trying to fix the problem of cost, we're trying to fix the problem of how it's executed, if we're subbing it out, if we're doing it internally, but what we learned here with conversation, 
Is that the money is going to be stagnant? Is all I'm saying is take that money. There are other things around the city. There are seven other council people here besides me. They can bring up other things that they see that they're not happy with around the city that look ugly, that just need a little sparkle done to them <laughs> that we can use this money for. And, you know, so I won't beat a dead horse anymore, but I think the Cape Coral Parkway idea is another one. But there are many more. There are many more. And I can tell you that I was very happy with what I saw at the charter schools. It was a big improvement. And I'm sure that the expenditure wasn't massive, but I do know that if it was let go for another year and the buildings declined that much more, the bill would be that much greater. So to put the money towards throwing it in an account on sidewalks that were probably paying 10 times too much, I, I, it just doesn't make sense. Thank you. Council Member Long. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, Chief Lamb, could I get you to come up for a moment, please? I'm, I'm still hung up on this, um, these three uh, uh, FTEs. Somewhere along this process, it was discussed, I think, at the last meeting that, um, to some degree, that this was needed to eliminate overtime. Can you sort of explain how that specifically, or the addition of these three firefighters would specifically reduce that overtime? Uh, again, Ryan Lamb, Fire Chief, for the record. Um, so, Council Member Long, what we were able to do working with city management, we went back and, did a, do a, and conducted a staffing analysis. And so what that basically means is when we look at the number of mandatory positions that are required to be on the, on the um, street every day working at a fire station. So currently we're at 57. We've, last time we've done this, it was uh, 2018. And so we went from 46 until now we're on the precipice of looking at 62 minimum staffing every day from battalion chiefs, firefighters, uh, lieutenants, and engineers. And so we did uh, a calculation there. So the number of people it takes to fill one of those seats every day. And so the calculation we came out with was 3.92. So almost four people to fill one of those seats. And so we extrapolate that to look at the number of FTEs that are needed for shift work. We came out to 243 FTEs and then divide that by our three shifts comes out to 81 um, individuals per shift. And then we worked on the associated ranks. So with the um, proposed budget prior to today, it only had 240 FTEs for shift staffing in it. And with today's, it brings it up to 243, which is right on the money for where we need to be uh, just to maintain our, our minimum staffing. So you're saying this, this would get us to the 81 or that's the long that, that gets us to the 81 per shift, the 243 assigned for operations or, or shift work. So then that would equate if you're, if you're factoring in sta the oncoming station 13 into that, as far as those figures. And the additional rescue. That's well, that one, that, then this number might be different, but that would equate to 6.23 per station as far as FTEs. Um, we do it a little less by station because every station is staffed a little bit differently. Some stations have four, some stations have um, five or six, depending if a battalion chief station there. Do you know what a tr typical station's FTE is as far as the staffing members at a, at a particular station? So we do it less per station, it's per Well, I know that, but what, what would be the industry standard? I know that, that, that it differs, or even surrounding municipalities, like, for example, what would Fort Myers have per, sh per shift on a station? Uh, per shift at a station, they're, again, it's going to depend on each of, their, each of their stations or how they staff it. So some of them are going to have four-person engines. Some, some people are going to have two-person engines at each station. For us, it's about looking at how many, you know, if we're trying to cover that seat 24 hours a day, 365. And we also work a 24, two, the average firefighter works 2,496 hours in a, uh, in a year. That's with their Kelly days and the other piece, that's what they work out to. Uh, we've looked at a number of areas, whether it be San Francisco, Atlanta, a number of other departments, even here locally. Some of them don't work Kelly days, some of them have different accruals. And so there isn't really a one size fits all solution uh, for it. So it really is uh, customized to each individual department. So, so staying on the topic of overtime and, and, and how this would alleviate the overtime, and I'm not sure whether that's the main justification for, for moving forward with this at this point, at the additional three. Um, you mentioned in a memo that we received yesterday, you referenced uh, the 50% rule for uh, promoted personnel. Yes, sir. As far as the minimum staffing. Mm -hmm. um, so does that affect in any way our ability by adding these three FTEs to reduce the overtime if that 50% rule still applies, considering that the three that we're bringing on are firefighters, 
Which uh, would, that, would firefighters fall under the pers promoted personnel? So with this, we've also had conversations with city management that we would look at to appropriately place uh, the different ranks. And so for instance, moving one, um, having a floater, we call lieutenant and two floating engineers. Uh, we're gonna do that, uh, the plan is I believe, correct city manager, do that administratively. And that gets us to the staffing model um, that's recommended there in staffing alternative two. So we end up with 81 FTEs and then we slot them into the appropriate ranks. So it's kind of chicken or egg, do you bring them in as a firefighter and then upgrade them or do you just bring in those upgraded positions? Okay. So that gets us, if, if your question is, is that number that we're looking at, it gets the appropriate numbers in the appropriate positions. Um, that may not be conducted directly through the budget. It might be done administratively after the fact, but we have the right number of FTEs. Okay, that the, there. and the purpose of all this is I want to make sure that we don't rely too heavily on this, uh, the increase of these three to reduce overtime, and then at the end of the day that we don't, we're not successful in that endeavor, uh, especially considering that the previous budget, these, these three were left on the cutting room floor. Mm -hmm. And so do you happen to remember last, last year how many FTEs we brought on board in, in the budget? Uh, last year we brought on 18 FTEs, or sorry, 13, Station 13's FTEs were budgeted last year and it was 15 FTEs. The, the year before that was Station uh, 12 and that was 18 FTEs. Because if you're looking at the overtime chart that you previously showed us year over year, there's no significant difference in the overtime costs when you factor in the, that we've added the figures that you just added. So again, if we're making this decision purely on the fact that we want to reduce overtime, I'm not sure that, that, that that's a justification that I'm buying into is, is the point I'm making. And I, and I respect that if that's not one of your main justifications, I would love to hear it, but I know that that was brought up, I think, by the mayor last time as something that we needed to address and that this would address it. And I'm, and I'm not sure that uh, based on that fact alone, if you look over the years um, combined with the FTEs that we brought on each year, uh, it, the mean stays just about the same all the way across. So we've had a lot of rapid growth, and so being able to catch up with that and being able to see are we properly staffed. So if we were short one person every day, then we're filling that seat with overtime. So I do think that there will be uh, an overtime uh, reduction. I don't think it's gonna be astronomical, but I do th believe that we will see uh, some savings there, especially getting uh, people put in the, the appropriate slots. Not only is it just overtime, it's also looking at mandatory overtime. Because for us, again, we have to have um, coming up to 62 people on every day, so if somebody, um, calls off sick and nobody calls in for that overtime voluntarily, they go to the low man on the totem pole, whoever's next and says, you know, congratulations, you have to stay for another 24 hours. And so that hurts employee morale and all the other issues of having that. So having these extra people, especially in those promoted positions, helps reduce that likelihood. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, I'm just trying to get a, a better bearing as to, you know, the decision that we would make as far as adding those. And then uh, with regards to the bay door, you, you, you reference, and I'm sure you probably don't have it available or you would say, but the expense of the maintenance. Are we, I mean, how expensive is expensive when we're when we're countering that against four hundred and something thousand dollar bay doors? I mean, what's what's expensive when we're talking about maintenance costs on it? Yeah, so I've got staff trying to pull that up for me um, of what we spend um, uh, through the the different door contractors that we have, um, and so looking at that again. I understand that there's a number of needs that uh, that the city is seeing. If this, uh, you know, definitely sidewalks for children is a is a high priority and one that definitely seems like a, a, a money well spent. So we can look at that, we can pull up the, the numbers and uh, look at that moving into the future, but when we would see that return on investment. Okay, thank you. So with that being said, I guess I, I, would, I would pose to you guys, I, I don't know if there's any appetite for it. I don't know where I would allocate that money, but I would, I would be in uh, support of removing the, the bay doors from uh, the budget that was presented. And that's all, Mayor, thank you. Okay, uh, Council Member Cummings. Yeah, um, Councilman Locke pretty much asked the question that I was gonna ask Chief Lamb. Um, <laughs> it's about your bay doors, just a few more questions. So the one of the questions was the maintenance, uh, which he already went over and you really didn't have the numbers. But the second question with the maintenance is how often is maintenance on these doors? Is it once every three months, once a year? Is it all the stations, one station? If you could help us with that as well. Yeah, um, so we have maintenance based off of uh, an annual try to prevent it, pre preventative maintenance, excuse me, process that we try to do at least annually. And then we have you know doors when they break um, due to a variety of different issues, use, those other things age, um, that that pops up to be a, a bit of an issue. Um, again, it's, we, we work through it. We've, uh, we've worked through it for, for years. And so something that uh, 
you know, definitely is some we would like to see into the future. We're putting these, these doors on station 13, and so uh, perhaps we'll, we'll see how that station works in, in response to these, these uh, new doors. If you don't mind me asking another question, last year was there one station where the door broke or got stuck last year? No, they, they all break. <laughs> so That's, it's, it's a frequent thing? Yeah, especially with the, the age. Um, we, again, we have several different styles. We have some that are the roll-up style that as they come up, you have to use a chain if, the, if there's an issue with the motor or something goes out. And then there's the other ones where um, they're more like a residential garage door with the panels, except for they're much taller and heavier. And so um, we have those on station six. Some of our older stations bit built in the, the early 90s. Our newer stations right now all have those roll-up style. And again, station 13, we're going to put in these, uh, these new glass um, accordion style. Okay, because the reason why I'm asking this question is very important. So you're talking mm -hmm. about station six. So this is a roll-up style. You guys use a chain pull-up. So, you know, you're talking save a mind. So this is my question of what I'm asking with the doors is, is it expensive to replace that door i know it's very expensive to get this other door that you're looking at but saving a life is very important i mean even taking off that extra minute if you've got to you know pull a chain to open up that i just want to clarify right now it's still a push button it, it goes up with a lift um, and then that only time we have to do that is if the power and the backup generator fail or we have some type of mechanical issue with that opener um, that's when that happens so it's not frequent that we have to actually go out there and manually lift those doors. Okay. And um, I guess my, the other question I want to ask you too, um, I know we're talking about these doors, but it's very important, especially with us doing a budget and we're about to make a decision. So um, I know Gunter had asked you, the mayor asked you a very important question, is this a want or a need? And you know, Councilman Long made a valid point on the costs. We can go to something else. But I'm wanting to know if we have a door that doesn't work well and you're constantly doing maintenance on it and that is adding up in dollars, I mean, what, what is the average cost? I mean, there's got to be like some kind of number of, of what it costs. Is it 15000 Is it 5000 25000 to to fix a door? Can you just, I, I know it's not the exact you know, cost, but can you give us an estimate of what it does cost the city to fix these doors? So I think that's going to vary on every every door. I hate to give that that answer, um, but I think it's going to vary based on every door. Uh, where they're going to pull up what the RPOs are, I think we're somewhere around 50000 for action door, and I think we have a couple others that we're, we're with. Um, again, I do believe that the things we put in the budget are things that uh, are, are needed in the fire department, but this is one that's not going to be mission critical if this one doesn't happen this year. Uh, another suggestion was looking at um, some of these kind of how long do we continue to invest money into to seeing these things get limped along and that's kind of what this is is at what point do we say hey we need to make a transition uh, and go to this new style and that's expensive to do and again we understand the doors are still going to go up the fire trucks are still going to go down the road uh, without this if if that's the wish of council all right thank you, thank you. then i had um, a question for our new city attorney alex um so me, are you? <laughs> what was? So I know uh, you're talking to the mayor about um, this dollar amount that you're looking at. Do you already kind of have your business plan put together and how you're seeing your department of, of kind of a, an idea of what you're wanting and, and how you want it to look? Because I am in agreement with the mayor and Councilman Stanky. The numbers are very low at 0.24% underneath. Um, but with that being said, before you answer my question, um, you know, I'll have a question for the mayor here once you answer that question. So, I mean, at this point in time, it's, it's, it's my second day. So I'm still really evaluating um, really what the demands, is, demands are of the city, uh, you know, kind of where, where I think I want the office to go. Uh, but I also recognize that, you know, where I think I want the office to go, I have to be mindful of the fact that just logistically, space-wise, I, I can't, I can't do any more people. Um, so I'm very, very mindful of that. And so moving forward, uh, what I'm really focusing on first and foremost is making sure that I've got um, the ability to retain the people that I have, uh, the ability to retain new people uh, when, that, uh, when that occurs, and then, and then really just addressing kind of the demands in that regard. So I'm, I, 
to answer your question, I'm, I'm still evaluating it. I have an idea where I'm going with it, but I think it's going to take a little bit more time for me to really be able to uh, identify uh, the course that I'm going to be taking for the department. And the other question I had to ask you, you seemed like you were pretty eager to get this moving forward. And I know that our mayor was stating that we can relook at this here in the near future. Um, I could see it in your face. You're like, I need to get this going. Um, is this going to hold you up for, for making things happen in your department? Uh, and, and the reason why I'm asking that question going to the mayor is if we uh, can do what he has asked, even though it's lower, put it at a 90 day uh, like period to get him going in his department, at least helps him to get to get moving. And then we can reevaluate everything in 90 days and come back with, with a business plan or however way he's wanting to put his department with you or with all of us and we can go over it from there. And if we need to bring it up, which it's obvious, it sounds like, you know, might happen, um, then we can do that. And if I may, here's the way I, I'm really envisioning it. You know, the, this is the, the workshop for the next fiscal year. That's not even going to take effect until October 1. So realistically, I'm not going to be even, even able to have that funds until October 1. So putting that aside, here we are in, in August. Now, the reason why I brought it forward in August is the last thing I really wanted um, because I was not involved in the budgetary process. I kind of was made aware of it, so I, I really kind of did a, a quick look to see where we're at, checked out some other municipalities and realized we need to be competitive. And there's a reason why we need to be competitive because we want, we want quality and we want to retain the people that are, that are quality uh, employees. You know, we are your professionals. We're the only ones with, with Juris Doctorate degrees. Um, so to, to do that, that's why I, I did this, recognizing conservatively where I, I intend on going. I, I, I had no intention on giving a sticker shock. I don't think that's appropriate. I need that full year to really kind of delve into it. It's going to take me time as, as I've conveyed to some of you, it's going to take me some time to really, really immerse myself in everything that's going on with the city of Cape Coral um, in order to be able to identify with, with any degree of specificity uh, where I may need additional people. But right now, it, it's my concern is I got a regional area, and, and, and I mentioned this to the mayor, and I would have I would have spoken to all of you if I had the time, but I didn't officially become your city attorney until yesterday. Um, I would have I would let you know that there are other other governmental entities that are paying more, um, and and the last thing I want to be in a situation where I'm losing someone, and if I'm losing someone, I can't replace them. Uh, and that's really as a result of the market conditions. And, and I'm seeing it, uh, and I'm aware of what's happening. You know, I, I did leave Sarasota County. They're, they're unable to fill my position with what I was making. Um, and the person that they had said it was not enough. So that's what's, that's what's going on out there. It's a very, very tight market. Um, and I'm just trying to avoid not putting myself and the city and all of you in a unfortunate situation where I'm left scrambling. Well, that's back, really it. Yeah, that goes back to, I think, b believe uh, what the mayor was stating is trying to, um, are, we, are we under, as, as well as councilman's thinking, we want the best of the best. And if we have to go up so you can bring in the best of the best well, for the legal department. As I said, I, I you know, I, I wanted to convey to you that I, I don't look to have any more money. If, if you're comfortable with that, I have no problem asking for, for it. But again, I'm trying to be conservative. I really, really am. Um, and then in being conservative, that's why I said I will hold the line. I know that, you know, here we are on August, uh, August 15th or August 16th. Um, you know, I'm going to be spending this time in order to really ascertain what my staff is and making sure where my staff is and, and who is where in terms of where they need to be. So I'm going to be taking that, you know, I'm not going to have access to that money tomorrow. That's, that's a given because the budgetary process is not over. Um, so that's, that's kind of where my thought process was. I wanted to get it in the forefront to you right now during the workshop process. I did not want to do a, a after the budget adopt, I didn't want to do an amendment. That was just not really what I thought was a prudent thing to do for you all. I wanted to get it in, before you, in front of you, uh, and I didn't want there to be a surprise later on down the road. And that's why I did what I did. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Welsh. Thank you. Uh, I want to touch on a couple, couple things that were brought up and hopefully 
one of the things might be able to help us move forward. Um, Chief Lamb, the bay doors, I know it's, uh, it is what it is. You don't have to get up. I'm just going to make a comment. Uh, I know it's for one fire station and it's four, but I think Councilman Long made a good observation that maybe we don't need four at one station if another station might be useful as far as response time, getting two of them. And we do put two on one station and two on another. Uh, I know you'll do that. That's your job, not ours, but I thought that was a great thought. Um, whatever it is, you know, the, we don't need them on the front and back if it's an emergency response team. So I'm hoping that you look at that and I'm okay with keeping them in the budget the way they are, but as long as that we're doing it correctly, not just retrofitting one station, you know, to, to utilize it better. As far as the attorney's budget, uh, the way it is, I'm glad that you added the extra money because you, you, it's going to take you some time. And I appreciate that you put it in there and we're not coming back for a bunch of amendment later. Uh, if we do need to add more money, uh, we can do an amendment. So if you find that this isn't enough to keep us competitive and we need to relook at everything, I don't think any of us are going to have a problem coming back and making a budget amendment later, but I'm glad you were able to at least get this in here and get it to our attention. So I'm okay with the expenditures there. As far as all the talk we've had on sidewalks, sidewalks and city beautification, um, I don't want to lose sidewalks. So, Mr. City Manager, if we were to move the sidewalk money into a city beautification, could we maybe put a slash on that and put sidewalks as part of city beautification? Because let's say we do get the bid process right and we get a contractor to come in and they're able to provide the sidewalks at a better price, as Council Member Shepard was saying, we're not overpaying for them. I don't want to tie up the million dollars that we said no sidewalks but I also don't want to overpay for them by saying it's only sidewalks so is there a way on this line <clears throat> of the funding adjustment that city beautification slash sidewalks whichever the best bang for the city's buck is for this next year you get what I'm saying to where it's not put in as only sidewalks we can just do whatever the best cost analysis is yeah, I think it would take some understanding of how uh, the finance director intends on classifying the funds. Mark, are we just going into like a general transportation capital project fund or is there a specific sidewalk uh, project fund? We have a specific sidewalk project fund. So with this city beautification, is sidewalks eliminated from that or can sidewalks still be spent with the city beautification money? You know, if we, if we just want to put this all into a bucket and say, you know, we'll spend whatever we're going to spend, it in, but I guess the question is, is who, how do we make that determination? In other words, it, who's making the determination? If, if the bids come back really good on sidewalks, do you want to allocate five million, a million of this year plus four million of last year? Or do you want to, so the last thing we want to do is get this wrong and then have the council say, well, you should have spent half of it on sidewalks and half on beautification. So some of what you all are doing when you appropriate in a, in a budget is you're, you're setting priorities. And so, and you're also communicating to the public what those priorities are. And so if, if sidewalks is a majority of your um, priority, um, then, then that's where you ask to put it. If, if beautification is the majority, then you would ask to put it there. But it can't be both in one and then choose whatever the best it is you know you know what I'm trying to say though is in order to speed up the time and and conversation is there a way to just leave it until we know what the bids are you know does it have to be allocated specifically for sidewalks or can beautification be a sidewalk e to me putting a sidewalk in is beautifying the city even if we set it aside as sidewalks and the bid comes in too much we're gonna be back talking to you about what to do with the money so whether it stays in a sidewalks or it goes into some other some other name or a combination of names, it, it's okay to leave it the way it is today because that is your intent if it's sidewalks. And then we would come back, if bids come in something that are astronomical again and we can't figure out how to make this thing work, then we come back and we talk to you about a, a different strategy. And we could always amend it and change it to You can always amend later. it. We do amendments regularly. So you okay. can always amend it. Well, with that being said, I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm okay with what is presented today. Um, 
as far as allocating and you know not having to go back and forth about this that or the other knowing that we can make an amendment to change these different budgets and and go in the direction that's best for the city so thank you councilmember shepherd if you look at the history of cape carl What are we stellar for? We're stellar for public safety, first responders. We have the best police department. We have the best fire department. Um, and it's because we invested heavily into them to make sure they're the best. And uh, I think when you read all the articles about our city and they talk about public safety, we're right up there at the top. If we had the money to put them new doors on every single firehouse in the city, our fire chief next year would tell us something else he needs. And he would only do that because that's his job. His job is to be the best and to weigh the variables out of his department and to always look for improvement. It's our job to look at the whole house entirely. So every year, for the past at least 15 years that I've been watching these meetings, we have been stellar with public safety. And we fail in beautification. And it's the same thing every year. So, <laughs> if you were a student <laughs> and your school teacher pulled you aside and said, okay, you're stellar in these two things, but you're failing in this, what do you think needs to be done? Change. We know we're failing in a certain area, but we're not changing the way we respond. We're talking about doors and, you know, things like that when that department is stellar, it's the best. We, we brag about it. But yet we have other things in our house. I'm looking at it, the city as our house, where we're failing. And I think that when the, when the whole budget process started, it should say, where are we failing? And what are we gonna do this year? And I just see us doing the same thing. When I say us, I say the leadership of the city from the past 15 years, is I see the same thing happen over and over again, where we know where we're failing and we refuse to act appropriately. So, you know, I'm no way saying that them doors aren't important, don't, don't get me wrong. We have two professionals that run our police department and our fire department, and their job is to be the best. And no matter what we give them, they're always going to come at us with something else to be better. And I want them to do that. That's their job. But I think it's our job to weigh out by looking at the entire house and say, where are we failing and where do we need improvement? So, so you're proposing to remove the bay doors? Is that what I'm trying to get is like, I'm we not, can sit here and talk and talk yeah, and talk, not, but I'm I just not, want I'm, some I'm solutions. Not, I'm not saying, I'm, I don't want to tell any council person what to do. It's just, I'm just demonstrating a frustration. So what's, what's your proposal then? To remove that, the bay doors from the budget? That there's any monies extra at all. It should be for improving where we're failing. It, it's not just trees or medians. So is your it's proposal to remove the 425 and add it? There are things around to... the city that look really bad. And our appearance has everything to do with how successful we are as a city. We have to look good. I, I understand that. Hold well, on, council member. He has the floor. Okay. You're more than welcome to have your opportunity so, when he's done. So I don't want to sit here and, and be the, the grandstander for, for trees or palms or, or medians. I just want to let my fellow council members know that we all get emails, we all have eyes, we all drive around the city, we all read these articles. There are, we are failing when it comes to our appearance. 
And there are a lot of things that we don't have to throw a tremendous amount of money at to have a, a big response. So what I'm saying is, you know, uh, I'm for putting all the extra money towards beautification. Like I said, I don't know the dollar amount that, that our city spent on what they did at the charter schools, but I know that the, whatever they spent, it had a big, tremendous impact. I would love to have an impact when we enter our city and come over the bridge, you know? I'm not seeing busted up trees and things laying over and benches that haven't been touched in 20 years and pavers that are ripped up and, you know, they're, they're, I mean, I can go on and on. There's just a lot of other things and I, I think we have to decide what our priority is for this budget year. What do we want to improve on? And I think it should be what we're failing at, um, you know? You're, you're, you're not going to, you know, convince uh, our fire chief that them doors aren't important because they are important and that's his job. You know, he's going to do that and, and I want him to keep doing that. But I'm just telling us that we have to weigh it all out. There are other parts of the house that, that need some improvement. And uh, the city manager is only going to do what we push him to do. And if, you know, I mean, look at it with public safety alone. We're building two training facilities. What, what city's even doing that? So we are, you know, when it comes to public safety, we are the champions. But we're failing in other, other areas. So we should all be talking about how we can improve in them other areas. Thank you. Council Member Steinke. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Um, I appreciate the analogy uh, as it relates to school and um, doing really well in this class and so maybe better do a little more social study work because you got your social study grade up. Appreciate it. I love the, the analogy. I'm an analogy guy. So um, that certainly got me thinking a little bit too. In the same vein, from an analogy standpoint, it's always going to be cheaper to put a new air conditioner in the car. It's going to cost a lot of money to go buy the new car. So it, you do have to come to the point somewhere along the way where you say, yeah, it'd be cheaper if I keep fixing it, but at one point in time, rubber meets the road, and you say, all right, I just got to buy the new car and bite the bullet. So, um, uh, and wh whichever way you go with that, I, 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 can, I can go either, either way with that. I did want to put some, just some dollars and cents to our whole um, uh, legal department, and, and Alex, you're at a disadvantage coming to this, you know, at the point that you are where you weren't able to have everything prepared at the beginning of the budget cycle to prepare um, for the city manager to be included. Uh, so, um, but I just wanted some numbers. I was shocked, absolutely shocked, at with your addition that we just go to 0.24 and I look at the other, I did some quick math. Uh, the anomaly in the group is Tallahassee. I don't know if that's because you have a lot of um, you know, young attorneys coming out of FSU there that maybe they can hire people for less than somewhere else. But the others seem to be a little more congruent. But even if you keep Tallahassee in the average, if we just take the average of those five that we have the number, the average is 0.576. Um, budget to budget, what that means is if we were just average with those other five examples, um, it would be $6.3 million in, in our budget. The 0.24% that your additional dollars would bring us to is $2.63 million. So the difference, if I just look at the averages, is $3.7 million. I don't know necessarily that we want to rely upon just an amendment down the road if all of a sudden we find that we are way out of class with you know, where we are prepared legally um, within our city. So I would highly encourage you to get the numbers as quickly, you know, together as quickly as you can. Um, as uh, Mayor said, you know, we want to be in the 75th percentile. Uh, and so in that whole 75th percentile, maybe the numbers will change some from you know, where we are here. But man, the sooner you get those together, the better off I think we would be to be dealing with this realistically uh, because that's, that, that's just not a little, oh, let me find some spare change in one pocket to go ahead and make up the difference. That's a significant amount of money. It's more than twice what we're currently budgeting. And, and, and to answer your question, uh, there are, are four um, 
four lawyers in Tallahassee that are one year uh, of service. That's why that's why the numbers are lower. Uh, they're all over a hundred though, uh, but they are four of them that have that. Um, and again, and I go back. These other municipalities have more more staff, um, and and that's something that you know we may get that conversation, but I can't have that conversation with you now. I need the year in order to figure that out because we may not have enough staff uh, considering the overall city budget and how big the city is and the demand associated with it. Um, you know, and I go back to my previous place on the East Coast, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, we had a dedicated police legal advisor. We had uh, dedicated prosecutors that prosecuted municipal ordinance violations. It's by far a greater, greater entity in terms of what is done for the governmental operations. That may be something what you may want to do. I'll be more than happy to have that conversation with all of you. It's again, I, I know what I heard from you folks um, in terms of where you want the city to be, and I want to make sure that I accomplish that endeavor for you. But it's there's logistics involved, and so that's why I want to have that conversation. Sure. And as, and as regards to the numbers, like I said, I am just trying to be competitive. And that's why competitive and, co and conservative, because I need the one year to really look at things and really make a determination where what our next steps are going forward. Well, and just what you just said, I think ties into uh, Councilmember Shepard's issues and, and the number of times that you've heard it up here about city beautification. If, in fact, we need more prosecutors as it relates to people following the rules for the ordinances that keep our city beautiful that they don't, they don't do now, then that could be one of the areas where, hey, that's a position we're missing or a interdepartmental department of yours that needs to be beefed up if we want to be able to keep up with th the citizens' responsibility to add to the beauty uh, to our city. So I just, I just think, I think that's something that we should hit as quickly as possible so that we're at least on par for our ability to manage the city legally while we're putting our efforts in all the other areas as well. Yeah. We're dealing with less than 1% of the budget, like yeah, it's, a it's, lot less than, <laughs> you know, so, th and so whatever we got to move there, if that makes us, you know, A, more competitive to have the best people, B, have the staff that we need to fulfill the responsibilities that allow the game plan to come to fruition, then I think that's a key component here that maybe was a sleeping giant that none of us were aware of. And, and I believe that this is the first step in, to that endeavor. Okay. And, and that's why I did it. And again, I, I did it very, very mindful of that I am new, uh, recognizing that I'm gonna need the year to really immerse myself in everything, you know, have the consistent conversations with all of you on a regular basis and to see where is it that you want this city to go? Because I think I know. Um, and, I'm, and, and I've got the tools and I've got the knowledge and we can make it all happen. It's just going to be a matter of, you know, the consensus of the entire council. Okay, thank you. Council Member Welch. Yeah, sorry about that earlier. I was just trying to get direction from Council Member Shepard as far as what he wanted to do uh, in order to add more to the beautification budget. So um, I was, you know, we're here to discuss not what we think is best for the city, but how we're going to allocate these dollars. So. Would, I understand we do need to beautify more. I understand that maybe we're not spending the money in the sidewalks, but I was just hoping just to get direction as to what his thoughts were. Was he looking to remove the bay doors at 425,000 and add it to beautification? Um, and would that be the direction we give the city manager for our final budget meeting before we adopt this budget? Or are we just gonna talk about how we need to do more and not have a solution? So I was just trying to get to the solution of uh, this funding adjustment. So that's what I was trying to get at, thank you. Council Member Hayden. <clears throat> Thanks, Mayor. Uh, one correction from what his council member said, it was never said during this meeting by staff or anyone that we overpaid for sidewalks. So let's, let's get that straight right away. Um, what was said is we didn't want to overpay for sidewalks with the latest bid that came in. And we're going to go out for bid again and hopefully we'll find an amount that works for us and we can continue with the project, which in no way, shape or form, form makes the sidewalk budget stagnant because it is going to go out for bid again and hopefully we can continue to move forward with that project. 
if our crews can't do it or if the bids can't come in too high or if the curbing crew can't be uh, reallocated at some different point and it looks like that money is going to sit there then we can have that conversation later on but I'm not going to jump the gun here at all and uh, say that that money isn't going to be used because we are we are way far away from that um, on the idea of um, putting a slash between sidewalks and beautification one has to do with beauty the other has to do with safety and I guarantee you I will always choose safety over beauty anytime uh, if you have an unsafe city no one is going to come here to live regardless of what the trees or the curving or the landscaping um, looks like um, Mr. City Attorney, I appreciate the fact you identified a need right away. You reacted to it. You certainly need the time to evaluate what's happening with your staff, where we're going to go with how we pursue our legal matters, and where we stand in terms of being competitive with the rest of the state. It's always difficult because you have to be licensed in the state of Florida to serve here, so it's not like you're, you're bringing in attorneys from other places, with, which limits you um, a little bit anyway um, if you know the fire chief mentioned that you know they'll continue to provide great responses no matter what doors are on their fire stations and if there's a better use for that money currently then we'll find a place for it if there isn't then uh, at some point if the doors are breaking down I think we have to look at that as a serious need for at least um, for at least one of the fire stations thanks mayor Thank you, Council Member Cummings. Thank you. Um, Councilman um, Hayden, I've, I feel that I think we're all about the safety here. Um, safety does come first, especially in my book, but if you, would, if you were paying attention to what they were saying, the monies are not being used right now for the sidewalks. I'm all for the sidewalks. I really am. But if the monies are just sitting there, then let's utilize the funds on something else that the city needs. So I believe that's what they're saying. So I want to make sure that you understand that safety is number one in my book, always. But if we're not using the funds, let's allocate them towards something else. So I just want to clarify that. And also, um, what I would like to say to Councilman Welsh, I think it was rude that you were interrupting him because he was sharing his opinion and his viewpoints. When you share your opinions and your viewpoints, we let you speak. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Shepard. Yeah, I will clarify. Um, uh, I think we did some great things already. We, uh, I think the most important thing in our city is our tool belt. Our tool belt are our workers. We made sure that we, we, we stepped up to the plate and we gave them an increase that we were able to do. And, and that was very important. I think for our legal department to be successful, we need to give them the funds they need to be successful. I, I don't want to invest in, um, in not being successful. I only want to invest in being successful. So I want our legal department to have the funds they need to be successful, like we were with the rest of our employees of the city, by giving them the monies they needed to be successful. So, you know, my opinion is any extra money should go to beautification. And there's all types of things that beautification is just not trees and plants and things like that. But drive around the city, there's a lot of things that just need to be improved on because our image is part of the whole package of being able to afford to pay our tools, which are our city staff couple thousand people that work for the city being able to afford to pay them what they need to get paid our city has to have a value so it's a fine balance council member Hayden and the balance is keeping the value high and the safety high not just keeping the safety high and ignoring the value it's a full package saying we're failing in one location and to me all the extra money should go towards where we're failing uh, and uh, I, like I said I think the uh, 
I wouldn't even mind giving more money to the legal department because we're, we're not even bringing them up to uh, where they should be. We're just getting them on the page. <laughs> and I, I, and I, I'm not for that. I'm for being uh, the best that we can be. Thank you. Council Member Cosden. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. City Manager, do we have any funds um, that are similar to the sidewalk fund where we didn't spend it and it rolled over? I'm sure we do, many, right? The only funds that are eligible to roll over are capital project funds, operating funds at the end of the year, finance sweeps, and go into a fund balance. Road paving? Road paving, capital project fund? Uh, generally speaking, they've been encumbered, and so they'll, if we haven't spent it all in the, uh, by the end of the year, the encumbrance rolls into the next year. So this happens in, in budgets. It's yes, not abnormal. All the time. It's not unheard of. And it doesn't mean that we take that money and spend it on something else because we weren't able to spend it the year before, right? We keep right. it for what it's intended for. Okay. I just want to make that point when it comes to the sidewalks. Um, is the median beautification funds in that category too? Yes, ma'am. They're in capital project funds. Did we have any rollover? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My point is made. Thank you. Yeah, I think, uh, it, you know, out of all this discussion, it sounds like the two items of, of uh, contention to some degree are the bay doors and the sidewalk. And I guess, yeah, beautification under that. So, you know, when it comes to the firefighters, uh, I think uh, Councilman Long had brought up a few points re regarding that. Um, one thing I think maybe would be helpful for all of our meeting meetings in the future, mainly because of what uh, Councilmember Long had mentioned earlier in the, in the meeting was, uh, you know, it's some points in time, Council individually bring up either recommendations or desires that he or she may have. And that's all well and good, but as we all know, we make a decision collectively as a body here. So I think that uh, something that may be a good practice for us in the future, no matter if it's a budget meeting, regular meeting, cow meeting, is maybe at the end uh, of the meeting to you know, have a discussion on to make sure we all are on the same page on a particular topic that one of us may have mentioned. That way the city manager knows exactly what the direction is. And I think that's maybe a question that you may want to ask us at the end of the meeting because what I don't want to happen is just because one or two individuals may mention one particular thing, then the city manager acts upon it. I think we have to have a consensus by a majority uh, you know, just because uh, there's, uh, there's a silence of a, other members, that doesn't mean there's a consensus. So we want to make sure that we know exactly, moving forward, what that consensus is as a collective body. I think that will I think that'll help us all moving forward. Uh, so that was just something I, I picked up earlier in the conversation. Um, as far as the budget's concerned, I think, uh, like I said, the two uh, items, uh, you know, of contention, I think, is the uh, sidewalks and the bay doors. You know, for me, for the sidewalks, hey, if we could throw $100 million at sidewalks, great. But if we can't spend $100 million, why are we throwing $100 million at the sidewalks or anything in this city? Um, and history has shown us over the last two years, uh, we have spent a very small percentage of the monies that we've allocated. So I think question number one is regarding the bay doors and the sidewalks, do we want to keep them in there or do we want to move them somewhere else? If we're going to, what's our preference? And I think that's the consensus of the discussion that I heard from all of us uh, is that was the biggest items that we've talked about. So do we just go down the line and try to give the city manager the direction or just say, hey, look, I'm fine with what's presented here today, and, and we'll move forward and try to get a consensus going down the line. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll open it up. I see uh, 
Councilmember Long put his uh, light on, so I'll let him uh, make a remark on that, and then maybe we can just go down the line and give the city manager the direction he's hopefully looking for. Yeah, my remark wasn't necessarily on that last point. It was on your, your first point, if we're talking about procedural notes. I think in hindsight it would have been a heck of a lot easier and saved a lot more time to say, hey, we got $3 million, how do you want to spend it? And then we're not in a position where someone like myself is, is fighting to try to maybe get something removed rather than saying, hey, it's already been included. Um, that would just be my note. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Council Member Cosden, I guess uh, maybe we'll start with you up there and we just kind of work down the list here so we can hopefully get this wrapped up. Yes and yes. Okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, what their two yeses are for. Uh, <laughs> are, are all main orders and sidewalks? Main orders and sidewalks. Uh, okay, and so if those are the only two, are we all then saying that we agree with the other one? Yeah, so unless you. I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, seven, this is your opportunity. Let's try to sh <laughs> get this vetted out so. Uh, well, unless you have some other ones. Well, no, I think it's a fair question. If we're only giving a vote on those two. Well, let's get through those first. Any other ones, there's no bone of contention on those. Right. No, I, I haven't really heard a whole lot of discussion on any other topics the last uh, hour and a half, but uh, the bay doors, beautification, and sidewalks. Maybe the attorney. Yeah, well, we three, and the attorney. We had the three firefighters, and yeah. how much overtime do we hire instead of right. to keep paying the overtime? Okay. But I'll vote on the two. Um, and the, is the yes vote that you want to keep it in? Yeah. yeah. Or if or not, vote? where do you want to reallocate it? Okay. All right. May, Mayor, if, if I may. Uh, yes, sir. So we're not voting, right? No, no. Just <laughs> we're just having a discussion. <laughs> a consensus. I, we're looking for a I consensus. Feel <laughs> My second day as city attorney, I should yeah. let you know you're not voting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless we're talking about his budget, and then that could be a different answer. <laughs> I, would be, I would be in favor of uh, keeping both of them where they are. Okay. No and no. And do you have a preference where you want to put them? Beautification. For me personally, um, you know, the bay doors really hasn't uh i could go either way on that really i mean i don't i it sounds more of a want than a need uh, i tried to get that uh try to get that uh difference but uh I, i'm okay if we want to leave the bay doors in there sidewalks um you know for me i just really don't think that we're going to spend the extra million dollars uh we already have four sitting there and uh since this is a yearly budget you know, I'm looking forward to get the best return on our investment for the monies we have. Uh, if we can't spend the extra million dollars, I don't want to put it somewhere just to put it over here in this pot and let it sit there. So I would say I would uh, probably want to move the sidewalk money to not necessarily medians, but city beautification. I think that is a very broad statement that could be used many different ways. Um, and then if uh, I would rather come back for a budget amendment, if it's uh, Mr. City Manager comes back and says, hey, we're doing a great job on the sidewalks and we're, we're going to spend all that $4 million and we can use more, then I know Mr. Mason will be back here on a quarterly basis for uh, a budget uh, modification. So I would reevaluate it then. So that would be my preference. Uh, you can't spend it if it's not there. So <laughs> yes and yes. Um, Yes, on the bay doors, because it is the future, and we are not, it's not like we're retrofitting all of them. So I think we do need to start getting that uh, at least budgeted and towards it. Um, like I said earlier, if, if it goes sidewalks or city beautification, it's fine with me either way. Whatever we can spend the best dollars on. But I also know that we can always come back and add more money to sidewalks. So if, it, if that moves, it's not going to be the end of the day for me. So I guess yes and half, half yes. Either, either or. So yes and yes or, yeah, that's fine with me. The bay doors, I'm, I'm good with them, without them, but I'm, I think it would be good if he had them because of, you know, be the top there. Um, as far as sidewalks goes, I'm all for the sidewalks. However, we 
cannot be using the money right now for the sidewalks because of the inflation and the cost of everything. So I'm all for putting it towards beautification. So cleaning the city up, making it look better, absolutely 110%. So thank you. Uh, no and no. I don't necessarily have a preference where the sidewalk money goes. But if the consensus is to move it to uh, beautification, then I would not oppose that. Yeah, and the only thing I wanted to kind of re reiterate what uh, Council Member Shepard said earlier today was, you know, I think uh, over the last couple of years, I think we've really, uh, we've really uh, tried to express an interest to make our city look better. Um, and I think uh, back in our, uh, our winter retreat, I made this statement. We can talk a good game all we want, but unless we put dollars towards it, we'll never achieve what our goals are. It's as simple as that. So I, uh, you know, if, if making our city is, look good is gonna be a priority, we can sit here and wish it all day, but if we don't put dollars to it, it doesn't really matter. We're wasting all of our times just talking about it. Uh, Council Member Hayden. Yeah, just one thing I forgot to add. Um, Council Member Shepard, you mentioned we were failing. Um, you can make a really strong case that we've been failing at sidewalks too. 8% is not a good number. We're not much higher than that now. So to think that sidewalks has become a success story is wrong. So I'd certainly put sidewalks, although we're making progress in the failing category right now. Thank you. Mr. City Manager. Okay. Bay doors are in. Based on Councilmember Welsh and Cummings' support of sidewalks, but would like it to be in uh, beautification, that leaves us on a 4-4 on, a on the sidewalks. Oh, you were? Yeah. It was a solid no. Okay. So we're, we're at, we're at a, basically a 4-4 on the sidewalk issue. Um, do you want me to? So Who are the four that supported sidewalks? I don't think there were four. So I have Cosden, Hayden, Steinke, and I have Welsh as well as a yes. You said no. I, I said either way, <laughs> pretty much. So it, 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 if sidewalks are out this year, we can always amend them if we get better pricing. So if there's money in there, it's, it, I mean, or we even them up, we split the difference. You know, since we're at a 4-4, do we not say a million dollars? Do we say 500,000 in sidewalks and move 500 to medians at that point? This way we're not underfunding sidewalks, but we're just taking some away. Does anyone have an appetite for that? Of the dissenters that want to keep it in, if we, instead of doing a million, we said 500,000 and then move the rest of beautification, would that sway any of the other three? Yes. Okay. So is there any, do we want to poll again? Because there's another person that's okay with that. Allocating 500 instead of a full million. Knowing that we're having trouble spending it, but we're still not removing it completely. But you can't put sidewalks up. Right? Yeah, I think we can, if you want to poll again, that's fine. I know for me personally, the reason I said no to sidewalks didn't have anything to do with sidewalks. It was, I didn't think we could spend the money. Yeah. That, that was, so to me, you know, I don't think we can spend an extra 500 or an extra million, but we can go down the list. Uh, I, 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 hit, I hit my deal. I'm the, I'm the flipper. Um, so no. I am, That's I, hard to believe. <laughs> Sorry. So I, I, I am okay. I'm okay uh, uh, switching my vote to a no on the sidewalks with the understanding, just like you said, I am absolutely positive that it will be eight yeses if six months from now we're way ahead uh, on what we thought we could actually put out there as far as sidewalks are concerned. And, uh, and Mark and Mike come to us and say, hey, we need another million dollars for sidewalks. Uh, you can already pre-vote me for yes. Mm -hmm. that if, we can, if we can get ahead of it and we can actually build them, I, will, I would be all in favor of an, an amendment at that time. So yep. I will, I will uh, switch my vote uh, to a no on the sidewalk. Okay, so then the only question is, there was a definite direction on where not to put it. Is there consensus to put it in beautification? Yes. 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 Okay. Very well. 
And uh, Council Member Steinke, I, got, uh, I think you've already. That's me. Council Member Cummings, you okay now? Good now, thank you. All right, Mr. City Manager, does that uh, give you the direction you're looking for? Yes, it does. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, let's talk. Uh, I know we have a tentative date. Um, scheduled for next week. It sounds like we kind of resolved everything here. Uh, does council think we need a, an additional uh, budget hearing date for next week? Or Mr. City Manager, do you, I guess first I'll let you answer that question and then. We do not. Okay. Council okay with, uh, with that? All right. Again, just like we said the other day, Mr. Mason, just want to thank you and your staff for all your hard work this budget season. Um, seemed to be a little smoother this year uh, for a variety of reasons, but uh, I know you guys started on this early, and I, I just want to thank you and your staff for all your hard work. And I would like to thank all of you uh, for your input in helping us get to where we are today. Thank you. Okay. Next uh, item seven is a uh, time and place of future meeting. Have a regular meeting in the Cape Coral City Council is scheduled for Wednesday, August 16th, beginning at 4.30 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting adjourned.